about 6 billion plastic cups in the payment industry are annually provided, which equals about the weight of 150 Boeing 747. It's a big number, yeah? So 150 Boeing 747, only of banking cards made of, of mostly of plastic. But as I said, it's a strong symbol. We have something here, which even if it lands in a landfill, is not burned or recycled, it will decompose earlier or later. So it will not stay in the nature for about 400 years until it takes to de decompose a PVC card. But this is gone after, I don't know, two or three years. Oh, wow. Because this is really, yes, as if you would rip off a branch from your tree and put it on the soil or in the soil in the forest. This is pretty much what happens to this card, of course. And this is clear. We have to always bring this. There is, there is a magnetic stripe on the back still required, regulatory, mandatory. There is the chip. standard banking chip, of course, and there is the copper wire antenna. In. Those, let's say, those necessary features, they have to be. But this only makes about 5% of the full card weight. So 95% is paper, wood, and a biodegradable adhesive. Hello, Christian. Welcome to the show. I'm really looking forward to our chat today. Hello, Monica. Likewise, it's a pleasure to be here and to be your guest and looking forward to a nice exchange of information. Thank you. And I'm really looking forward to this because like you and I met in Money 2020, basically, and it was one of those random meetups during one of the after Money 2020 events where you were meeting a lot of people this, the other. And we just were, I remember that how I met you, like we were chatting and then you had something different in your <laughs> Batch and you had this wooden card and I was like, what is that? And basically that's how we met. And you were like, oh yeah. So basically we create these wood cards. And in that moment I was hooked and that's it. And I was like, hey, we need you in the podcast. So really looking forward to know more about you and to know more about your vision, to know more about the good card and yeah, to learn about it. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yes, I also recall that an encounter as a real pleasant one. It was really nice. We were all in a really relaxed mood and the, the fair was gone. And so everybody was taking a, a, a care of himself. And in fact, yes, it was just fun to, to showcase you that card. And in fact, like I have one here as well. <laughs> it is always the same reaction which really gives me a real good gut feeling with that product, which we have recently brought into the market. So even those people who have been working in the business for more than 20, 25, 30 years, once we approach them with our plastic-free wood card, with a timber card, they get it in their hands and they have this immediate effect of a real nice touch and feel experience. So you can really look into their eyes and see their glance and say, hey, wow, I cannot believe this is this is just wood and no plastic inside and no plastic coating. And this is a payment card, true? Yeah, so it matches the international paying system requirements. And I can only say, yes, in fact, that is true. And we are excited to hand it out to you. And the people say, okay, thank you. Can I keep it? And I will get back to you. And this is a real strong motivation to to go on and to now yeah, enter the market with this new product. It's amazing. And I can't wait to hear everything about it. Before we go into the converse, full conversation, yes. I have three quick questions for you so that yes. we get to know you as Christian mm -hmm. rather than as the fintecher that you are, more like Christian. So mm -hmm. what is your best productivity habit? My best productivity habit is to switch off anything that disturbs me or that can disturb me. So really taking me the time to focus on what is ahead next. And as we are all living in a daily working routine where every time, every second, something pops up, like I'm attending at least three chat services I have my emails. I have two email accounts at the moment, which I have to keep an eye. And then uh, there are those written lists uh, with tasks that you put yourself in the morning and in the evening, you always notice 
there's only two or three marks behind a number of 10. I think at the time where I feel, okay, this is a clear priority and I have to deliver this by then, this eases my efficiency because then I can really, with good reason, switch out everything and then I'm getting really efficient. I like that. And what is your definition of success? My definition of success? The definition is of, of my personal success is to have a good feeling in what I'm selling and what I'm telling and what I'm doing. And if this on top is pleasant to my counterpart, to the other side, so either I deliver a good product or I deliver a good mood or a good feeling, we have a good conversation, we have a common ground and we separate with uh, both sides uh, a good feeling of agreement, uh, then I think it's a good success because o only a business where both sides leave the table with a good feeling in the end is a good business. So it's, yeah. I know it's hard to achieve it all the time. Every time it's never a 50-50 well, well feeling balance. But overall, I must say I'm trying to work on that. That yeah, setting up a long-term relationship is something which I consider as a success. Cool. And how do you go about it? What's your secret to building that <laughs> successful? <laughs> I personally try to be as authentic as possible. So I'm a pretty, let's say, emotional and, and gut-driven uh, person. I try to not to hide too much things from myself against the other one. And yes, I think this is appreciated and uh, the openness and at yeah. least the feeling, which I hope to create, that I'm not playing any hidden games, uh, is something that may is one of my successes or well, success reasons. That. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you define authenticity in a very nice way. It's, <laughs> yeah, you're just being hidden agendas. It's... Yeah. Yeah. Of course, sometimes you have to, to, to play tactics. Of course, if you want to achieve something, you sometimes the best example is, of course, price negotiations. It's, it's always you are entering like into a bazaar and of course you have to sometimes put on a poker face or something but in the end if you do it on a calculable way so that the other person knows more or less what kind of person is sitting in front of her or to him mm -hmm. then i think it's, it's something which contributes to as i said a long-term relationship yeah and then if we I, i found this fascinating about you as well if like your business, it's basically wood cards. But mm -hmm. what many people may not know about you is that you have a PhD and <laughs> yeah, and you study <laughs> trees. And I love that. I'm like, oh, he has a PhD on trees. That's amazing. So yes. you like studying. So what's your favorite book? <laughs> oh, my favorite book, in fact. Oh, wow. This is a difficult question. I Honestly, I haven't read a book since quite a while because I'm, I'm very busy, family, Working. job. So in the evening, reading a book ends most often with after half a page because then my eyes shut down. But in fact, I, I like biographies about mm -hmm. persons that are like, cool. For example, I just got a for Christmas present. I got a I got, a, I got a biography of the Foo Fighters had like Dave Grohl, who yeah. I consider also a, a very authentic and a very well passionate person, a real enjoying life person. And this is what I really I like it's taking those persons who are really successful, who really have uh, ad addressed a big audience. And at the same time, they don't lose the, the touch to the ground and they really. Yeah. They, really well know where they are standing and this is also what drives me yes I, I might be a phd and i might something be relatively successful with my current career but i very well know where my roots are and where i'm really settled and i think this is always important that you keep this inside and it, it happens really easily that you get distract, distracted from it you have many business trips you have many new persons like clapping your shoulder and pulling you this or that way mm. but if you have some really solid ground and this is my family then uh, yes go and center yeah. yes you go and center and then you can also perform better awesome great advice mm -hmm. for everyone no As no we... advice just telling about my own experience <laughs> <laughs> no but i think it's important to basically what you're saying it's mm -hmm. know who you are don't let success come to your head yeah remember to center because it's important.
Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So let's or, talk about your business. What has been the role of purpose in your life, in your business, in fintech? The role of purpose. So you mean like a purpose-driven mm -hmm. action, which I uh, try to do. So, yeah, as you said, I'm not only a PhD in timber, so I'm a natural born wood lover. From my childhood, I'm, I was always doing something with wood in the workshop of my father. I was just assembling cars or ships or wooden guns or whatever what was interesting mm -hmm. at the time to have. And I made a cabinet maker apprenticeship. I studied wood science and technology and I, I went to Switzerland for a PhD. I, I worked in the wood adhesives industry for 10 years. And since two and a half years, I'm doing this startup thing about this new card here. And when I look back to that career, I think it, it was always wood as a purpose. Wood, which is in the center of my activity, because I truly believe that this material is a real fascinating one. It, it regrows just by photosynthesis. So you don't have to put any human energy into that material, be it for using it in a, in a timber building or for in a, in a bank card or whatever. And it's a biodegradable material. It, it does not leave any carbon footprint traces. Yeah, So it's, it's a relatively short carbon footprint cycle. And uh, it's a beautiful material. And giving this to people, be it in a big house or be it in form of such a card, it always comes back with a positive swing. People mostly like wood. It's a very positive material. It feels good. It smells nice. You have a big variety of different wood species. Everything, Every wood species is a little bit different than the other one. And this is my purpose. And now bringing this material into something where nobody ever thought before it would really work. And as Swiss Wood Solutions and Dege Next Solutions, Copacto, Reifeisendrucker, all those companies which have worked in the past years on this project now have really created something new, mm. a strong symbol that not only a banking card, which has ever since been made out of plastic, can be, re, let's say, replaced by a material, biodegradable. Um, but there are many other articles in our daily lives which can be transformed into something more sustainable. And this is my, let's say, purpose behind it. I can see that in your eyes and the how you speak. It's like, re you really mean it, which I love that. Um, how, yes, yeah, yes. it's like, yeah. how did you, can you tell us about Copacto? Like, how did you go about, hey, let's create this card? Mm -hmm. How did the idea come up? So the idea of this timber card was born already in mid 2019 in Switzerland. Like Swisswood Solutions is a startup company that ha has been founded 2016 and had developed a technology by which it could densify normal maple wood into something like this. And if you see the ratio, it's really densification by the factor of two to three and at the same weight. And so it's, it's just, it's a densification procedure. However, it's so stable that you don't have any spring back effect and that the material is really solid and really scratch resistant and so on. And this material was originally taken for the use in violins as fingerboards as a replacement for tropical ebony wood, which is, a, I would say, a problem mm -hmm. uh, that you cannot overuse the tropical forests. And it's difficult to get good qualities at reasonable prices and quantities. So the, let's say, music industry is pretty open to tropical material alternatives. And this was showcased to the Swiss television so we had a pretty nice broadcasting in the evening program of Switzerland. And it occurred that one of the, well, let's say, visitors of that show was, was a member of the Zürcher Kantonalbank. And they approached us the next day and called, hey, what you showed there with this solid wood, can you also do this with a banking card? Oh, cool. And we said, oh, 
not me, I was not there in this company, but my colleagues said, okay, yes, let's take that challenge and let's try to do the same what we do here with solid wood with veneers, so very thin sliced solid wood. And it showed that it works. Um, so the first prototypes were made by end of 2019 as a payment card. And some of those cards are still in the wallets of, of my colleagues. So uh, since then, they have been in functional work. And uh, it took us then three years to bring that product into market maturity, including this industrialization process. Because if you want to sell this product, of course, it needs to be produced in high quantities mm -hmm. and it's con constant quality and at reasonable price. Yes. And so we partnered up with the German Digi Next Solution, which is the central provider of cards and materials for the German cooperative banks, so-called Genossenschaftsbanken. And they found Swisswood Solutions, a pretty cool, innovative and sustainable company. So there was a major investment into our shares. And on top, they said, come on, let's go for a, a partnership company, which is now Copacto. And the card case, the business case of the cards has now been carved out of the Swisswood Solutions mm -hmm. as this is the business model, create a business case and then at a certain degree of maturity, carve it out and put it as a standalone company into the market. And this is what happened in beginning of June. Since then, we are a standalone company in Germany, a GmbH, <laughs> and in foundation still. So all the official administration work takes a while. Yeah. But I'm the designated CEO there. And once the company has been fully founded, I will be in charge of it. Amazing. So mm -hmm. who are your clients and which problem are you solving with this card? Basically, our clients are throughout the full value chain of those cards. So as, as many of our visitors know, banking cards are a multiple value chain product from the raw material until the customer holds it in his hand. And so we have two main approaches. So first of all, our main sales intention is into the B2B business. So we are addressing the big card manufacturers and card issuers of the world where we really want to sell them this card body, be it like with an implanted, with a implanted chip or the magnetic stripe or whatever, so that they can take it and put it into their global sales channels. So this is one intention. And of course, we also talk to banks and we also try to marketing, do marketing activities into the end user. Mm -hmm. Because only if you and I and your neighbor yeah. are going to the bank and knock doors and ask, hey, I have seen that at my neighbor and my neighbor also has one. Why don't I yeah, get one? Like one to so um, could you please get into your supply chain and ask your card provider why he doesn't have it yet in his program or in his portfolio. And so this is, we are trying to be visible in different levels of the, the value chain. Yeah. That is very smart because exactly if consumers start demanding the card that I think mm -hmm. we are, because like we, like customers are becoming more conscious about the impact mm -hmm. of the environment as such. Yes, I think customers will soon will start asking for more and more sustainable products within financial services. So you're exactly. And yeah, just to add, so what we observe is that, that like the big banks and also the big schemes, they all have sustainability programs launched. So mm. For example, MasterCard made it public that they are not going to use any virgin PVC anymore from 2028 anymore in their cards. And so there is already a lot of restructuring in the material supply chain ongoing. And so be it recycled PVC or ocean-bound plastic or PLA, which is a, a natural starch-based card. This is all really good and we really support these activities. And we are just offering another alternative, which is 
really plastic free and not inverting anything which is on a let's say petrol or artificial starch basis but it's really it, it's wood and paper in this card and this is a hitting the nail on its head it's something which really raises the interest of let's say the card business and this is what yeah gives us quite some i would say back tire wind at the moment yes can you tell us about the size of the problem so these cards they look innocent it, not this one, <laughs> the other cards, the plastic cards, they look like, oh, it's just a plastic card. I have like five or three, or I don't know how many, but then mm -hmm. they all become waste eventually. Mm -hmm. Do you have any numbers behind like the impact that this waste created by plastic cards is creating in the world? Yeah, there, there are studies available on the internet. And so I could provide you some, some links there where, where there are statistics that that there are billions of tons of plastic waste that have been produced since the invention of uh, plastic and that about only 80 no about only 10 percent of these quantities are regularly recycled another 10 percent roughly is incinerated mm -hmm. and about 80 percent of these plastic quantities are put somewhere they are just I don't know, brought into, let's say, landfills, or they are just entered into rivers or into the oceans or whatever. Everybody who is reading newspapers should have gone aware that the plastic amount in the nature is increasing. And of course, the quantity of plastic cards worldwide, about 6 billion plastic cards in the payment industry are annually provided, which equals about the weight of 150 Boeing 747. It's a big number, yeah? So 150 Boeing 747, only of banking cards made of, of mostly of plastic. However, if you compare this amount to, let's say, the packaging industry, food packaging and so on, it's a relatively small amount. But this is, as I said, it's a strong symbol. We have something here which, even if it lands in a landfill, is not burned or recycled, it will decompose earlier or later. So it will not stay in the nature for about 400 years until it takes to de decompose a PVC card. But this is gone after, I don't know, two or three years. Oh, wow. Because this is really, yes, as if you would rip off a branch from your tree and put it on the soil or in the soil in the forest. This is pretty much what happens to this card. Of course, and this is clear, we have to always bring this declare. There is, there is a magnetic stripe on the back, still required, regulatory, mandatory. There is the chip. standard banking chip, of course, and there is the copper wire antenna. And those, let's say, those necessary features they have to be in there. But this only makes about 5% of the full card weight. So 95% is paper, wood, and a biodegradable adhesive. Biodegradable adhesive as well. Yes, of course. Yes. You, you, you have to put a biodegradable adhesive that uh, after a short while, uh, the, the, the several layers of the card start to delaminate and open the surface for the attack of the microorganisms. In the end, you must expose the material to the microorganisms in the soil. And this is bacteria and, and fungi, wood decaying fungi. That is cool. That is the type of yes. conversations that we don't have in the office, right? Everybody's just, <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, we need to print the cards and how many cards and the card design. But very few people are thinking about, and yeah, and the biodegradable card, because then basically we own, well, Many of us know that this card has many layers, like all the banking cards are made out of layers, but now you're saying, yeah, there's a few layers in here, but the adhesive that puts it together, mm -hmm. it's so cool that it even yeah. <laughs> works out <laughs> with nature so yeah. that nature can do its job and basically mm -hmm. absorb this back into the soil. Yes. It's a natural fertilizer to your flower pot in your <laughs> It's yeah. <laughs> plant fertilizer. This is, by the way, also one, one of those reasons we, why we try to really avoid 
any color printing on the card because the inks commonly used are inks which are not biodegradable and there's no such material available. So that's why we really prefer to do this laser engraving, engraving. and to really have something which is not adding any chemicals to the wood surface, but it's just carving out the, the and it's also possible to laser engrave uh, QR codes. So oh, really fine. Cool. So basically all the banks who start using these, all the fintech issuers that start using these cards, all of them mm -hmm. could be the same color, e.g. the wood color. It's a personalized card as well, because there's no mm -hmm. two equal cards because of the process. But then my logo would never be like the blue or the yellow or the white or the black or the red. It always be engraved. Yes, this is what this is our, let's say, first choice. If, of course, if customers really want to have their logo or their, I don't know, security labels in in a in a color print, we of course try to make this possible together with our personalization companies. Then this is always the case. A king, a customer is king, but yes. in the end, it's also a nice conversation that you can bring into the customer's mind that uh, would you, wouldn't you reconsider your wish to put a color logo on it if you could make it even more sustainable and make it in a different approach. And this is something where you see the creativity starts working and people say, okay, we, we don't need to yeah. put color. We can take it out. I like it because you even have the contactless engraving here. It is cool. Yes, how, even that. Yeah. yeah, even that. Like, how about the scheme logos? No problem. You just provide us a, a vector file and we can include it. Engrave it. Cool. Mm -hmm. the, yes. The scheme logos, of course, they are, they have to stick to their rules and they are providing the requirements. Uh, but what we have seen in the metal cards, there is flexibility and uh, there mm -hmm. are metal cards out in the market where the, the scheme logos are laser engraved and uh, are put on the card uh, as a hologram. And so this is something, ongoing discussions. We are in conversation with the big schemes and uh, we see flexibility and openness to further develop their requirements. And this is really a positive signal. Yes, it is. I love that. It's a whoop for <laughs> the industry working together. That's a again yeah. and like whoop, yeah. whoop, whoop. Yeah, and it, it's what you want. If you want to develop your business as a joint combination of many different players, then of course, everybody has to do the next step and to adopt to the next development. And also the standards, like all those testing standards mm -hmm. of the cards, there are ISO and CQM requirements. And some of them simply do not fit to the characteristics of our wood card. For example, if you let me just take a small example, if you take a normal uh, plastic card and you, you, you bend it over, this is so everybody can do it really easily with this card. And with this card, no, no, no way. You know, There's no way. Of, it doesn't bend. It, it is really a stiff card. Um, however, we did measurements here and there is a standard test where you have to achieve a deflection of 15 millimeters. Uh, for a cycle of, I don't know, 400 or 1,000 cycles, whatever. And to achieve this deflection, you have to apply a force that is 8 to 10 times higher than you would have to apply for a plastic card. But the card still survives. So if I would do this now with a lot of force, it would not break after the 15 minutes. So it goes back and goes out again. And But now in, in the whole certification procedure, of course, this is something where we have to explain and where we have to convince. Mm -hmm. And in the end, also where we expect that the testing standards and the testing requirements are further developed towards this new product. Of course. Like it was done with the metal cards a few years ago. So they also entered the market were very new and tried to bend over a metal card in this way. You will also have your issues here, no? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So what are the challenges? Yeah. What are the challenges that you have in creating this type of product? Can you please repeat? The connection was shortly disinterrupted. Yes. What are the challenges that you have when it comes to manufacturing the product or selling the product? 
when the manufacturing process is done into an industrial scale, we of course have several, I wouldn't say, yeah, it's, it's no issues, it's challenges. As like the standard assembly process of the different sheets layers into before it goes into the big lamination presses it's pretty standard and the supply chain is available so you can get your foil with a magnet stripe magnetic stripe already applied in the right uh, pattern uh, or you have your uh, i don't know your antenna inlay on a reasonable substrate in the right design you have your uh, hot stamping technology and the corresponding hot stamps with the adhesive suitable for the plastic surfaces. Everything is available. Now, when we come with a new substrate and say, okay, guys, now we don't take plastic sheets, but we take veneer. And of course, the magnetic stripe must stick on the back of the car and be really positioned in the right way and shall work. It, yeah, it's a rela yeah, it's a smooth surface, but it's not as smooth as glossy as the plastic surface. So this is something where we have to talk to the producers of the magnetic stripes. We have had a lot of conversations to suppliers of the uh, inlays with the antenna because as a standard product in the payment industry, everything is done on, on PET, PVC, polycarbonate, whatever. So we had to say, okay, could you please try to do your uh, antennas on a biodegradable material, for example, on paper? Or wood, and then you're kind of getting into details because, um, like normal, uh, a big company only starts uh, going into an innovation when the business case is well enough yes. behind. And uh, so it's the classical hen and uh, chicken. No, not hen. <laughs> it's the classical egg <laughs> and chicken <laughs> topic. So uh, the the business case, of course, now is a relatively small case against the billions of cards from the plastic industry. So we had to convince companies. And at this time, it was really helpful. And we wouldn't be at this point of development if we hadn't run into Degenex Solutions and the Raiffeisendruckerei, because they were really convinced of this product. And they were so pragmatic and also willing to invest not only into Swisswood Solutions, but also into their own machinery that within a relatively short period of time, we were able to produce a first pilot product, which has been in the market now since September. It's almost and a year. Yeah. Yes, so this is, and we don't have any complaints out of it. And so by this, we are now creating more visibility. We are creating references. We are building up a little heritage. And we are now trying to, of course, convince not only customers to go into more pilot projects, but also to convince the supply chain, the companies for those different components, to adopt their materiality and uh, mm -hmm. bring it into our requirements. It's a real new product. We are the only company currently offering this, so there's no other company able to produce it. It's a patent a protected procedure. And it's also something of added value for the business of our customers because they can really tell to their customers and to their value chain, hey, look, this is really something without, without plastic and this is made out of sustainably managed forest wood. And if you also want, we can do this out of wood in your region. So North American uh, producers or Malaysian producers they don't have to uh, go and take the material from Europe, but they can go into their own sustainably managed forests, get the wood, and then, of course, with some cycles of technical optimization, wood cuts can be made out of that wood as well. That is cool, because I was about to ask that, like, currently you manufacture these in Germany or Switzerland, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then, exactly. exactly, if I'm a business based in... Asia or LATAM, mm -hmm. then can I work with you? Or how, how where do your customers live? Yeah. Currently, the cards are made out of Swiss wood or European wood. So maple from really oh, yeah. from the Swiss mountains. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and now I'm going <laughs> to keep this like really well. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like almost like gold. Yeah, it's unique. <laughs> and, um, 
And but the idea behind is to really use the regional resources to, to really contribute to the value chain of the forestry and of the sawmills and of the veneer producers around the corner. And the second thing is to really keep down the transportation distance. So what we do not want, and this is our the intrinsic motivation of Swiss Wood Solutions, is not to cut the wood at one part of the world and fly it around the globe to make pens or buy, I don't know, whatever product out of it. So you really can use the wood from your regional forests. And so with our modification procedure, we can really add mechanical properties, physical properties, and also let's say, properties from the aesthetic appearance, which are outstanding. And once we go into international markets, we will, of course, try to identify partner companies that we would provide the production license. So this is really, Copacto is the, the unique holder of the license and is the, let's say, provider of sub-licenses for production. The first sub licensing Pro, uh, production license uh, was issued to the Ralf Eisendruckerei in Germany. And, but of course, if there are companies out there in US or in Asia, let's talk business here. And let's see uh, what we can do. And the earlier, the better. Yes, I love that. And you have a really good product as such. And like you said, it's a unique. No one else is doing this yeah. in the world, which is amazing. And it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. And even you thought about the hay we manufacture currently this in Europe, Swiss, mm -hmm. Swiss good. But then <laughs> if I were to fly this all the way to Brazil, then it's not sustainable anymore. Or all the way to mm -hmm. Singapore or Malaysia or Thailand is not stable, sustainable anymore. Mm -hmm. But then it's, you even thought about the, okay, how can we manufacture this product regional with regional good? Mm -hmm. That is super cool. Exactly. So you have a successful product, a successful business. This cannot be done with, without amazing people and amazing leadership. Of course. What's your leadership style? Like, how do you <laughs> inspire people to, to do a great job like this one? So uh, I really try to provide the people the, let's say, the, the fascination mm -hmm. about what they are doing. So, I mean, I'm fascinated about what I do, so I try to really transport this into everybody working close to me and uh, with me or under me, and to really identify the, the skills of the person is always important. So you always have to see, okay, what are the let's say the, the potentials and the let's say the boundaries of, of the person development mm. but then to once you have really identified this or think you have identified you I'm, I'm really open to let this persons or the teams work in their um, own intrinsic mo motivation and ask for a result but do not just give the way to it but really leave it open and uh, I'm, I would say I'm a r relatively strong result driven person I have my quality requirements, of course, and I sometimes also time requirements, which is uh, sometimes necessary. But to me, it does not matter when or how the people are working on their task, but it's just that the result in the end is matching to what we need to bring the business a step further. And the second thing is that I'm a strong believer of, of let's say, the team approach. Of course, each team or each organization needs some kind of organizational structure and sometimes also a little bit of a kind of a hierarchy, but which does not mean that we are not a team, which is really, and I mean it. So I'm also uh, doing the dishes in our kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome of, analogy. Um, <laughs> yes. Not only because I'm the, the CEO, the boss, does not mean that I can also get clear the table of, uh, of uh, old uh, cups with coffee in. And this is uh, the way I like. I, I, and I personally, I, as I'm, I'm a cabinet maker. If there's something to be done in the workshop, I also put myself at night shift there and help to do something there. And I think this, this kind of role model approach is something which, yeah, 
maybe is something considered a positive mm -hmm. side for myself. But in the end, you should ask my colleagues and employees. If they could tell <laughs> exactly. it what is it real <laughs> <laughs> to work with Christian? <laughs> yeah, I can tell a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cool. It's been an amazing mm -hmm. conversation. Before we go, if there was mm -hmm. one thing that you could change in the fintech industry, such that it would make the lives of customers, members of staff, and shareholders better? What could it be? If I could do something there, that's a good question. I would say, yes, I know it's, it sounds a little bit, I would say, socialistic or maybe idealistic. But of course, I'm driving, or we are all driving commercial businesses, which are aiming at, I would say, maximization of profit. Mm -hmm. This, the, let's say, capitalistic system we are all working in. I'm thinking about my own activities and the responsibilities I have. Of course, I have to provide some yeah, gain in turnover and, and some, some benefits out of it. Otherwise, it does not work. But now, under the impression of this, let's say, climate crisis, we are all relatively directly heating into, I think it would be a good benefit if every individual is really reconsidering, is this what I'm doing really necessary? And do I really have to push or yeah, to squeeze the last droplet out of the lemon? Or is it also sufficient if I only get three droplets out of that lemon and leave the rest to others? It's, let's say finding the right balance between, of course, a profit-driven business, but in the end, try to be a bit more um, cautious about the resources we all only have. This also means maybe I don't have to fly to a meeting, but I can take the train, even if it takes two hours or three hours longer. But by this, I can reduce my personal carbon footprint, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Yes, always. What I really try to balance out is this continuous way of further and further optimization. It, I think it is not good for our future if everybody's only trying to optimize everything until the maximum. There must be some reasonable level where you say, okay, stop, that's enough. We all have sufficient. I like that. This is my... <laughs> Moment. Yeah, because you know what there's many well not many but there's some <laughs> founders mm -hmm. some founding team some management team that it's yeah we need to drive to make this like the next multi-billion dollar company and exactly mm -hmm. exploit exploit mm -hmm. to get there and what you're saying is yes and i understand that motivation we are working in a money business. Mm -hmm. Of course, money is really creating uh, some kind of desire to get even more. And, uh, this is, of course, I, there is a, let's say, human reflex in always gaining more wealth. Yes, but maybe a little bit less would help us all. <laughs> and it would still suffice to, to have a good living. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yes, that is very good food for thought and i think i'm going to leave it there so that we all think about that mm -hmm. so yeah. christian thank you so much it's been a pleasure having you in the show i wish you all the success that you and the timber card want and deserve if we were to find you and copecto and know more about the product where can we find you you can find us on the internet, visit uh, copecto.com or visit timbercard.com. We have a first landing page there, which of course still needs to be more engaged. We need more content there and we're working on that. And we will find me on different occasions. So I'm traveling to the next Money 2020 in Las Vegas. Yeah. And in the meantime, I will be at Trust Tech in Paris 2023 in November. We will have our own booth there. Amazing. So you're really cordially welcome to show by and get a nice touch and feel experience again. <laughs> Bring your friends. And yeah, otherwise I'm available as every businessman by mobile and email. 
And if you want to meet me in person, you either come to Switzerland for a nice hiking trip or a swim in the <laughs> Lake Luzerne or in Germany at the location of Degenex Solutions in Wiesbaden, which is close to Frankfurt. That's amazing. Christian, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Ciao, ciao. Thank you very much to you. And yeah, looking forward to meeting again. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.